I mean, you might have even heard sound check this morning. That's good fun, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Jane! Lastminute.com! Paul, you, Natasha. That's what I shall call oh, you today. Dear. Good morning. Crikey, Bobs. Natasha's well known for giving me heart failure. Today it's Jane's turn, eh? Oh, dear. Just rocked in the studio and then you might have just heard her go, hey, you can hear me, yeah, yeah. I'd already <laughs> sound checked your mic. That's all right then. <laughs> My big... Brian Blessed voice could be heard on your mic, so hopefully <laughs> yours good. can as well. <coughs> Mine's a bit <coughs> this morning. <coughs> Afternoon, Jane. Hi. <laughs> good morning and welcome to Natasha Makes, everybody. Um, Jane has appeared in the studio. Because I thought, I know I edited these instructions, but I'm not sure as I'm up for the demo today. <laughs> Ah, we're I have here. been here all morning. I was just doing something else. You got distracted. I lost track of time. Yeah. Yeah. I can't find my lipstick. So my kids always tell me I look like a corpse and I've got no lippy on on the, uh, on the old screen. So sorry about that, everybody. Hope everyone's well. I'm going to check. We've uh, you know gone live and all of that. It looks like we have, which is great. Yep, we're there on YouTube. YouTubers can see us. Thank goodness. And so we much. appear to be there on Facebook and Claire Angelina has found us. That's so good. So it must be true. Um, Today's a plane show, isn't it, Jane? Yes, sub subscription it show. It is, and all the subs have gone, so if you are a subscriber, yours is in the post on its way to you. For those of you who don't subscribe this month, we have got a fat quarter bundle and a long quarter bundle. Yes, because I use long quarters, and Gemma was like, we don't normally offer the long quarter bundle. I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, this time. You can do it with both. Yes. But the long quarters just make the process just a little bit Yeah, easier. you'll have less seams. Just easier. So... Yeah. We've offered both this month, um, but we'll talk <coughs> about the project in a little while. Yes. However, before then, <coughs> little announcement, which is that today it is young Mr. Kaif Fassett's 85th birthday. Rather fabulous chap that he is. Yes. Um, Amazing. And Natasha went to see him yesterday, so if you didn't see a live show, that's why. She wasn't here. She was at his fabulous house. She was, interviewing oh, him. Beautiful. So she went to visit him. We had a promotion on his fabrics yesterday where if you buy two half metres, you get the third free um, on our cut to order. And it's a collection of nearly 150 fabrics to choose from. I appreciate that some of you didn't realise that promotion was on. It was only supposed to run till midnight last night, but you weren't necessarily aware. We had some panicky emails. We had some panic. I don't like panic. No, we don't like panic. And it's Kate's birthday today. So what we've done is extended that deal for today. <clears throat> My voice is going today. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, mine's a bit. I think it's mm. the cold. I think so. Mm. Yeah, I had slight drama with the cold, I'll explain. Oh dear. But yes, yeah, so today's promotion is still there. K Facet Collective Fabrics on three for two cut to order. So grab, grab, grab while you can. Oh, Sarah Snaggy Fairbank Williams, still one of our favourite names. Absolutely. Says, have you got glitter in your hair, Jane? I have got glitter in my hair. I got tinsel in my hair. Every year Jane does this and every year we all get tinsel envy. Yeah, my hairdresser puts it in for me. It's so Put in like hair extensions, so it's just, it's clipped in so it, it works like hair. So Is you it can like wash it. Bonding, it's, they're like little clips, you know, oh, when you okay, have your extensions yeah, yeah. in, she just clips yeah. it in. So it just works like hair. It's so sweet, I love it. And it's just a little bit. So people like, they look at you and then they're like, you got tinsel in your hair? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> When I used to get eyelash extensions for December, I'd have little tiny Swarovski crystals put into the base of oh, them. Oh, amazing. So whenever I closed my eyes, and of course working as a nail tech at the time, I'd be looking down with my eyes pointing downwards and you'd just see this little row of crystals sparkling oh, in Oh, how everything. lovely. <laughs> ah, we love we a go. bit of sparkle. Oh, Claire Angelina says, you had your chance. They did have their chance with the yeah. case, but not everyone knew. And it's his birthday today, so we've given We're another We're kind, chance. so we give them another chance. Another chance. Yeah. Karen says, morning from a frosty, frosty Wigan. Good morning, Karen. Um, Jenny Totterdale says, good morning, Gemma and Jane. Joe Standage, your mother. Hi, Mum. Morning, Kate. Vicky's around. She says, good morning, both. Oh, Claire Angelina's kids are off school sick. Bless. Oh, Hope dear. to feel better soon. There's a lot of it about. There is. Um, yeah. Apparently your hair looks great. Thank you. Uh, we think so, too. We had a little issue last week um, with one of our broadcasts, and it's important just to mention that insofar as Facebook wasn't very stable and it did this switcheroony thing where it cut the show part way through and just ended it. Um, it's outside of our control. I feel I need to explain this just in case any of you experience that. Again, if our show's ever cut in the middle, chances are if you jump over to YouTube, that show will be carrying on recording because our broadcast continues 
it's a technical issue that's outside of our hands. Yeah, we carry um, on regardless. Yeah, SJ has <laughs> asked me to explain to everybody that Facebook is by far our least stable platform, unfortunately. Um, YouTube is strong. And that is where the website gets its show from, is the YouTube. So those two will quite often carry on running. So if you lose us on here at any point, you will see us on YouTube and you will see us on the website. I think yeah. Essie just like everyone just to watch on YouTube. I think she would. If she feels um, happier, doesn't she? It's like a there makes her calmer. Yes, yeah, she can chat on there. When I was at home, I used to have the YouTube on the telly and I used to have my little phone in my hand yeah. for the chat on Facebook, but then I'd have the YouTube on the telly and then sometimes I'd have the YouTube chat on, chat on my laptop. It's all going on. <laughs> yeah, all going on. I was like multimedia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apparently your Jane, uh, your Jane, your hair has really made Anne smile, Jane. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Natasha's around, she says, morning! Morning, Tash! Many exclamations. Yes. Soz, I'm late. <laughs> Who'd be late, Jane? Who'd be late? Who knows? <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Bit brassic in the Cotswolds. It is. I live on the border to the Cotswolds. And I went out to my car this morning. I've got a convertible and the glass goes up into the roof. There's no frame around the edge. Yeah. So I open the passenger door, throw my stuff in the front footwell. I have no idea how this door opened because the glass has to drop to come out of the roof to open, and it didn't. So when I went to shut the door, the glass is still up. Oh. And it went closed. Mm. Short of me smashing the glass. Which is not a good idea in this weather. So I'm like, oh, I've got to get in the studio, <laughs> oh no. I had to run some warm water down the mechanism to get the glass to drop. I had to do the same on the driver's side so I could get in. Didn't it's all good Jane fun. Didn't any of this. No. She has a panic about me not getting here at some point. I have this nightmare <laughs> about having to do the show on my own. It's fine, you would be fine. They'd just get one view, there'd be no close-ups or anything because I'd be scared to switch it in case it wouldn't just switch like, back. This is where I'm staying. <laughs> yes. Nothing <laughs> else is happening. Nothing else is happening. <laughs> and the office child isn't here and she's seen how it all works. She's up in that there Manchester so she wouldn't be able to help either. No. Mm. Tash in Cornwall. I probably should have some training really just in case. We're going to do it, Jane. You just keep resisting me yeah. um, and you can't resist me forever. No. No one can, darling. Absolutely. Okay. Not. You'd be fine on your own, Jane. See, it's true. It's true. It must I don't be true. Think you get all sorts of weird and wonderful shots, I tell you. Mm. Yeah. In other very important public service news, specifically in villages in Cornwall, specifically Tash's village in Cornwall, she now has shutters. So she's going to stop flashing the entire village every time she gets changed, which is great. Yeah. I did say she might not be quite so popular anymore. No. Now she's got shutters. <laughs> But she has, and she's lovely and warm, so uh, she's big thumbs That's up on nice, the old, uh, yeah. the old shutters. Keep the drafts out. And, yeah, oh, look, Natasha says, this is how we know it's Christmas, is when Jane gets some Christmas <laughs> Yes, and get the sparkly hair. It is true, it is true. I um, had to cancel my hair appointment because I was poorly, and I was so worried I wasn't going to get another not. one, because it, obviously this time of year it's really hard to get appointments. But yeah. fortunately, Charlie, my hairdresser, had, had a cancellation, so she snuck me in. I was really pleased. <laughs> I just had the person that had to cancel got in a cancellation as well. It's like this knock on Yeah, effect, it is, isn't it? Isn't it? it is. Um, oh, here we go. You would be fine, Jane, because you're amongst admirers and friends. Oh, bless We'd you We'd stick all. with you, Jane. Yeah. See, look at all this They're all in love for me. That's yeah. really nice. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to see anything, guys, but she, you'd hear her. So yeah. That'd be fine. I'd just be holding things up. <laughs> look, <laughs> that's what I you do. And I did this bit here. here. <laughs> now I'm going to the machine, which is here. Just bear with me. <laughs> what I'm doing is this, because you can't see. I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> fine, Jane. Be I'm fine. going to show you one day. Yes. Um, we have got a packed show. I have mentioned the three for two, on the cafe, fill your boots. It really is going at midnight. I've extended it. I can't extend it again. Also at med midnight, we'll have our half me to heavens. So we will have those ready to show you in a secondo. We have a deal on Waddings too. Yes. Um, you will see that we stock quite a few different waddings and some of them today have got 15% off. So again, fill your boots on that. Jane, I think you're going to do your demo and you'll talk about waddings a little yeah, bit, Yeah, because we've got a lovely book that I'd like to show you. Yes. And I used that to, to do some quilting on my um, sample there. Beautiful. It's a really lovely book, so I'm just going to just do a little quick demo on free motion and explain and show you the book because I think you'll love it. I really do, because yes. it's really nice. Important note about the book is that the um, publisher has only got a handful of these and we have all the stock reserved for us. So anyone who purchases from them is going to have to wait until 2023 to receive their book. So they restock at the end of this month. Yeah. Um, we've got all the stock. Cool. 
when our stock sells out, you will be able to get it on a pre-order basis. But if this is something you want, like soon, grab it quick. Yeah. It's a beautiful book. It's a really, I found it really helpful. Yes. And I think other people that are just starting out in their free motion yeah. adventures might find it helpful too. Good eye. We've also got some samples on, Jane. Yeah. Sample sale. Lovely. <sighs> I nice, don't even nice. know which order to do everything in. I'm very, very, very confused. There's a lot going on. There Best is a lot going on. Just get started, I think, maybe. Yes. We also have, to match with your bundles, wonderful fabrics. Yes. And those are tagged, again. You're probably looking at this and thinking, well, there's not much colour there. The bundle, the subscription bundle this time, is the beautiful greys. It is. Let's go so over we've got so see it. these gorgeous colours which are really useful colours. These, they're sort of like your, your neutrals, really, neutral palette. Black is always useful Yes. for everything. And then you've got the shades of grey, and then we've got silver here. Look look how silver plays. It's grey. It's a grey colour. It's, it's a, pa useful. a pale grey, but you put it next to the misty blue and the um, duck egg, and it suddenly becomes a green tone. It does. I don't I think love it shows the way as much on screen, does no. it? But it does have green tone to it when you I do love that. the way that greys you when I before I had my shop I used to think, Oh grey's grey and then you have greys and you're like, Oh no, that's got a bluey tone, that's pinky, that's got a green tone to it. It's quite fascinating. Yeah, it really is. So the tone is everything, so isn't it? I've just went through the warehouse <laughs> and picked some nice grey tones or fabrics that I felt would go with the grey tones. It's over there. You see there's a little bit of the um, small strawberry thief in there because oh, yes. the misty blue and the um, duck egg look fabulous with that. Let's see if we can retrieve that one. And those two beautiful um, Lewis, Lewis and Irene. Irene. Well, we've as well. Got, we have got those cut because they might be featuring in our Half Meter Heavens this week, James. So yes. I've already got a piece of that. If you want to grab that bolt. Yeah, there we go. We can show that. You can see how beautifully the misty blue and um, the duck egg go <coughs> work with that fabric. But equally, the paler greys look rather nice with it too. Lovely. And the great thing about this bundle is trying to match a grey is really challenging. It can be, yes. So even having this bundle in your stash to be able to use for reference and future use you know if you've got fabric in your own stash and you're thinking oh yeah i'll get some gray to go with that it's really common that we get people say which gray do i need for this it's really hard for us to tell over a screen it is if you've got these fabrics at home and you can just swatch then that's really handy that's the misty blue and the um, duck egg this is a lewis and irene fabric oh these are bluebell wood aren't they they're gorgeous, gorgeous. we've got these actually we're in they're in our half meter heaven offers aren't they this week yes, so these but we have also got it cut to order so if you wanted yes. more than half a meter Ingra and I were just saying how how they nice they would make children's dungarees these fabrics oh I love them I think but look the how these greys go fun, nicely as well with those they work really well so yeah <clears throat> but you've got little hedgehogs and you've got bunnies and all sorts it's just gorgeous it's a really pretty collection that is we just got the two out of the full collection of that of the yep. bluebell wood. We chose the best. Well, absolutely, That's love a hedgehog. So we'll pop these back in the half meter heaven. And then now. I chose a few like zingy colours. Love a bit of zing, don't we? Because I just love a bright pink or mustard with um, grey. I think it looks rather lovely. So these are some caves here. This is um, Japanese chrysanthemum in pink. That looks rather fabulous with greys. You can just imagine that thing. And if you can imagine the a square of that in the pattern behind us with the greys around it, it would look rather lovely. I'm not going to change over. There so, we go. You know, I've chosen plain colours in ours. I was thinking about the previous subscribers that would have a lovely selection of plain yeah. colours that they could mix in. Um, but this magenta... It's pink, isn't it? I just yeah. said it what it was. Yeah, but it's pink. Is, but it's there's yeah. magenta in there, isn't there? There is. Beautiful. Absolutely fabulous. And the same it's got the same colours in the cactus flower as well. That's cactus flower red. Which um, is rather fabulous. Lovely. Again, beautiful hot pinks and 
oranges in there, which I think look lovely with grey. I love grey and orange together. I think they look really nice. And then I picked a few bumbleberries because we've got some gorgeous colours of the bumble. Well, we've got nearly the full collection of bumbleberries, we have. haven't we? And if you haven't, yeah, and with the ones we haven't got, we've sold out of. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't had a play with bumbleberries, these are your friends. Uh, there's something like seven different shades in each one, isn't there? Yeah. And it's really clever. They, they are beautiful blenders to have in your stash. Now, this one is called um, Golden Green, I think. I think you're Yeah, right. Golden Green. But actually, it's a, a mustardy green. And again, I love that mustard yellow tone with greys. I think it looks fabulous. Beautiful. And we've got Postbox Red, because red and grey look stunning together. Always. Absolutely Always. lovely. Lewis and Irene did a beautiful colourway, didn't they, of their Jubilee collection that was all the grey tones and black yes. with red. With just and the red in really the pillar boxes. Yeah, really impactful. There's two shades of pink here. There's hibiscus pink. Oh, and then there's rainbow pink. And then there's there? rainbow pink. Rainbow yeah. pink is a little bit softer in its um, tones of the pinks, but it, they're very similar pinks. This has just got a stronger um, texture to it. But again, that pink with the greys. Beautiful. Looks lovely. Beautiful. You can see I've kept the misty blue and the, and the duck egg out there, but you know they don't look terrible with it, nope. so they, they mix in. It's but, a really yeah. useful bundle. Um, Auntie Lizzie said that when she's when she's looking for a thread for a garment, yeah, if she can't match it, she'll go grey. And a lot of the time, my machine is threaded in grey. Yeah, I Obviously, use grey all the yeah, time. Yeah, the top stitching, I'll match. Yes. But when it comes to just general seam, a lot Piecing, of the time, my yeah. machine. Yeah. Threaded in grey. Yeah. Permanently. Piecing, because nobody sees <laughs> no. the seams, do they? No, and it disappears quite yeah. often. It does yeah. disappear well. Goes with great. everything. Um, but we have the long quarter bundle. If you are a subscriber, your fat quarter or long quarter, whichever you subscribe to is on its way. Maybe you want to get a long quarter bundle for this project. That's available to purchase separately. Jane, for this make here, having the long quarter bundle is an asset, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got the greys that you need and the You've black got longer in there. pieces. But then you've also done a long quarter bundle of the colours. Yes. Which you've got there. Yeah, these are the nine colours that I use within the bundle. So it's like a rainbow of colours. They're sort of um, muted tones because I felt they went nicely with the greys. But obviously you could choose the brighter tones if you wanted to. If you subscribe, you'll have all of these colours already and you'll have them within the bundle. So you'll yes. have the brighter reds and the brighter oranges and the and the sunshine yellow and all of the, the greens and the blues. So you could you could use more primary colours yes. if you wanted to. But that's a nice rainbow bundle. And again, that's a lovely bundle to have in your stash. There's a really nice lovely. selection of colours mm. in there. So if you want to make it exactly as Jane has done and you don't subscribe, then that bundle there will give you the nine colours that Jane has used. Yeah. This will give you your greys and your black with a little bit left over. Yes. And then we've done something a little bit special, haven't we, Jane? Yeah, because it's Kay's birthday. Yeah, and because we appreciate you might like a print option. Because the beauty of this, this is a classic um, traditional block. It's called Shadow Box. You can see it all over, you know, Pinterest and and all the other um, patchworking sites that you might visit. It's, it's a traditional block and it's actually quite a nice way of showing off your prints. It is. If you've got a nice bold print and you don't really want to cut into it but you want to put it into something, having shadow box is a really lovely way because you can use a bigger square as you want. Yes. You know, you could even use a whole fat quarter if you made it into a square rather than because it's slightly oblong, but um, you could do that if you wanted to. So we've put, or I've put, because I just was allowed <laughs> to be here on my own yesterday. You were. Just Inga and I yesterday. So mischief making the pair um, of you, I'm sure. <laughs> I just sort of looked at all the. I was like, oh look, there's nine colours of the jumble here. That would look rather nice. So there's nine um, of the jumble prints, which I think would look rather stunning. Beautiful. And again, you it's know, a good choice, Jane. Bordered with all the greys would look rather lovely as well. The thing about grey is it's. Um, it's a colour that makes the other colours sing. It does. It, it lets it's, the build but it's not have as, their moment. Yeah, it? it's not as stark as a white background or, or as heavy as a black sometimes. Sometimes black's great because it really makes the colours pop. But sometimes you don't want it. It's a little bit too heavy. But grey is a nice alternative for sashing and borders and things. Definitely. And then we've got um, 
they're coleus and caladium yep coleus, which are very caladium. similar design and there's actually a bit of begonia, begonia. leaves mm. leaves in there but it's all got um sort of a leaf texture to it and of course with cave all the beautiful colors that when you cut a square you virtually get a different fabric each time you cut it because the colors play in a different way there's golds in here there's two there's the begonia um coleus gold and the caladium gold but they're actually slightly different because of the color palettes but there's some beautiful colors in here and they really look stunning so there's nine long quarters in there now if you were to order two units mm -hmm. two sets we would cut it continuously yes so you know you would get half meter pieces if you fancied yeah we will cut these to order for you because we can especially if you pop a note on that says to us can you please yeah and you know we'll, definitely we'll happily do, do that for you we'll definitely no do problem. it then yeah That'd absolutely be so there's those two colorways as well that i just put together yesterday because i thought they'd be a nice alternative to planes because you know not everybody is comfortable using planes because yeah. they can be a little bit un unforgiving you know yeah. they're very stark so um but I think that's got a lovely modern feel to it. What's great about the planes, though, is it's given you the opportunity to make every single panel be about the quilting. Yes. Because you've done different types of quilting on each block, and you can really see it. Yes. Whereas if you had a pattern there, you might not see that quilting. No, that's as clearly, right. Yeah. Um, which you will talk about towards the end. Yes. Something else for me to quickly mention is we have some new samples loaded up. Now, the samples that we've got loaded up, there are many. Um, they are work in progress samples, so they will need some finishing, they will need turning through gap stitching up, yeah. all that sort of thing going on. It might be that if you've bought a bag with a frame, that this the frame still needs to be stitched through properly and it's just been clipped in place. Yeah. These are samples that you can add your finishing touch to and then collaboratively say you've made something with Natasha. Um, what's not to love? But they are listed on today's collection. We have got a chunky old collection for you today. If you're wondering what I'm on about and you've not seen us before, you go to natashamakes.com, you can click the Watch Live page or Workshop Wednesday, scroll down, make sure you click to view all the products and all of the goodies in the world are there for you to shop. Um, there, there are many things, Jane. There are many there are beautiful many, things. Many things. <laughs> it's, uh, there are some samples in, in this collection, and we've not actually had the fabrics, have we? They're samples that Natasha's made previously. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it might be that she's made them for a different platform or whatever. Um, we've also got, if you're sharp eyed and you scroll down, you find it, the Fiskars cutting mat is on a deal for this week as well. That was one of SJ's Friday deals. She didn't give me permission to mention it, but I might have just skedaddled it in there. <laughs> The rotating cutting mat is an absolute essential for me when you've taught oh, me how yeah, to it's make my blocks and yeah. then spin them and chop. Yeah. yeah, Because having a rotating cutting mat, having your block there and just being able to turn the mat just means you're not moving all your pieces. And Yeah, um, absolutely. It's a game changer. And, you know, if you're limited on workspace, I mean, we're great because we've got all this workspace. And if we wanted to, we could just turn this great big mat round yeah, and cut it that way but not all of us have that luxury. So having your rotating cutting mat is just ideal because it's within a small space like that. You can just turn it around and retrim your block and it, and like you say, it doesn't move. So yeah. it gives you a little bit more accuracy when you're cutting. It's an absolute game changer. And mine was a gift. Um, well, in fact, I've got vouchers from my friend Vicky and my friends clipped together and got me vouchers. It, it's brilliant. I bought, it was, you know, it's one of those things you get yourself as a, right, well, that's a, a birthday present or a Christmas present. Yeah. But once you've got it, you've got it. And it's on a cracking deal. Silly, silly price just for this week. So sharp eyes on that one. That's my little top tip of the day. Lovely. Um, we do have the Half Meter Heavens to show, yes. which we will show. And then you've got a demo to do and some quilting demo to do. Yes. They're getting spoilt today, Jane. Absolutely. Getting their pound of flesh out of you today, Absolutely, aren't they? yes. But we did mention the beautiful Lewis and Irene. This, these first two fabrics are available cut to order. We only have what we have. Get it while you can. Then as Claire Angelina said, you've had your chance. <laughs> Blue Bellwood Reloved. And this one is Hedgehog on Grey with our lavender, Jane. Which just, there's a little bit of lavender in here which just pulls out those little flowers. The hedgehog is so cute. I think we need to go a close up on this fabric, Gemma, That's because fine, you can't really see that. it from there. The design is just 
so sweet. Little hedgehogs, can you see them? Look at that. Every detail on there is just beautiful. Yeah, isn't there's it? just the artistry the in there and yeah. the colours are just so pretty. I love the bluebells. Yeah, absolutely. I love the bluebells. And are those hyacinths as well? Yeah. They're gorgeous, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful the tones of the, the soft green mm. with the blues and the, and the um, lavenders, and then the little hedgehog jogging around in between the flowers. Oh, yeah. It's really sweet. With his little trail as he goes. Yeah. He's gorgeous, isn't he? I love the hedgehog. So that is from Bluebell Wood Reloved, but we also have, as you saw earlier, the Bluebell Wood Reloved on, um, and it's the, their signature print from the collection, so it's just called Bluebell Wood, on sage green. And we've heard this one, Jane, with light lilac. Which again, is a beautiful colour, and it brings, there's grey tones in the pathway there, but this light lilac just brings out those warm, um, lilac y tones within the within the colour palette, within the fabric, it's lovely. You've got the hedgehogs there and the little hair in, amongst the woods. It's really pretty. And the two of those together, they work beautifully. They're from the same collection. Yeah, I mean you've got you've got all your fabrics here. You buy the two half metre bundles with the two planes and you've got a quilt going on, look. The light lilac and the lavender just play beautifully together. They do. And within that collection. They really do, nice, they do. really nice. Got Cynthia with us over on YouTube saying greetings, coffee time with everyone. Looking forward to today's tutorial with Jane. Happy birthday, Kate Bassett. Well, quite. Yes. How lovely to have your birthday today. I always think people in December they suffer maybe a little bit on their birthday. Mhm. Mm it's not. Um... It's yeah. <laughs> My husband's birthday actually is December. Is it? Is this Sunday coming? Got a bit of clockworks for you now, Jane. Look at this. This beautiful. is beautiful fabric. As it says, with azalea. With azalea. <laughs> this is the azalea, the aforementioned azalea. Look, it's, there's a little tiny little flower in here, and this azalea pink is is a virtually exact match. So it really pops that, but at the same time, just brings up the greens and the yellows in the, within the fabric. It's a lovely it's quality such a pretty as well. Fabric. The clockworks. It's just like a like little it. like lakeside scene with rocks and, and shrubs. It's really it's digital pretty. Digital print as well, this one. Oh, nice. Really nice. You get a crispness it's called with a digital, digital print. Digital Lagoon in light teal. And that is the last that we have of that fabric. Now, something I found hidden away at the back of a shelf. And uh, we've only got one of these. Is that a little bit of Odile? That is a little bit of Odile. This is her <gasps> Magic Country collection. You can just tell Odile. The mm -hmm. colour palette is stunning. Flower fairies. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I, know. I don't think we get the vibrancy of the blue on the overhead cap. No. You're going to have to take our word for it, ladies and gents. There's a flower Just fairy in there. There's jellyfish here, look. Make the pattern up. Butterflies. It's just, it's Wonderful, classic isn't Odile, it? isn't it? And it's just got, I don't know, there's a vibrancy to it. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Who doesn't love a bit of Odile? Stunning. Marvellous. So I, I couldn't resist that one. So fastest fingers first on that then. Oh, our one. samples are flying out. Alison Linfield says, I've just ordered three. I'm feeling excited. Oh, happy Good Christmas. Stuff. Do we think this way up? Yes, I think it you possibly is. Tell. So, so this that. one is Moda Threads That Bind Wild Rose Bouquet in Rose. Beautiful piece of Moda there. Classic print. Gone nice khaki. khaki. You see that brings That's out these lovely greens. It does look good. And makes a, the lemony colour of the flowers pop as well which is rather stunning yes beautiful Indeed. cushion it gives you a nice bound cushion with that could you yeah beautiful stunning. really lovely yeah. or a flange jane you could do a little faux flange oh with yes that. absolutely jane might uh, <laughs> jane might show you her flange soon <laughs> yes i think it's uh, two weeks time you're going to show yes. us on your little mini flange aren't yeah, you yes. a little yes. faux flange faux flange yes Faux we piping, are. we'll call you it, shall we? want to see. <laughs> Faux flange piping. Mm. Oh, Jane, you're no fun. <laughs> Lisa Floral Classic now. Look at that. Look. She's There's a got that beautiful gold metallic and it just shimmers. I don't know if it picks up on the... It does we'll a little do bit a when we do that. Thing, but it's gone with black, of course. Classic. Because classic. Just classic. Absolutely. Beach bag. Every time any of the tote bags would work. Look stunning with this. Should we close up? I'm actually tempted to put close up on your shirt though first <laughs> because the you reindeer can see and the light bulbs Look. everywhere. It's my Christmas shirt. Shirt not for sale. Soz. Oh. Sorry, not sorry. Soz babes. Soz babes. <laughs> We've got the Look beautiful the metallic, metallic on there. Let's get it behind it and give it a little 
There we are. Lisa's Look metallics have got, um, I don't want to say a glitter to them, but they've got a, a, a luster, a sheen mm. that doesn't, some metallics can look quite flat, but okay. Lisa's don't. They've got like a movement to them and they're just, there's a decadence to her fabrics with the metallics in that you just can't compare. And the base cloth is stunning. Mm -hmm. It's just a, such a good quality fabric. We've had a request here for a Bumbleberry subscription. If there is a subscription you would be interested in, please, please, please do reach out to us. We're not mind readers. We think we know what you'd like, but we, you know, we're always pleased to hear from you. Info at natashamakes.com with your ideas of what you'd like to see in a subscription. We'll then look at the logistics of it, whether we can make it work and whether it can be, you know, tangible. I've seen the bumbleberries mentioned. I've actually been emailing with Lewis and Irene in the last couple of days and there might be some adjustments coming to the uh, bumbleberries um, into, you know, which ones are going to be in their regular collection because there are some that are in for a season and then gone. Yes, and they do. And there's a core range. So they do, um, they're very good at matching their bumbleberries to yeah. their fabric design collections, but they do have a core range of their black, their red and their creams and their light grey. So we'd have to agree with them of which fabrics were going to be available when. It's a little bit more complicated than, say, the planes, where we know that those are just yes. always available. And we can always get um, those. We can't... Yeah, because Once they, the bumbleberries are gone, they've gone. And trying to give you a full collection of bumbleberries is an impossible task because they release a new one each season. They're, well, every year they release a huge number, don't they, Jane? Yes. And they They are have, like, four yeah. season collections. So they have, like... They have two or three collections each month mm -hmm. and they make sure that the, the colours go with those collections yeah. and then they'll have like the spring, summer, autumn and winter. So, so they do their bumbleberries for the year and then it's apportioned to those collections. So some might cross over into more than one. Um, for example, we launched the Majolica. If you missed that, we've got the Natasha's favourite nine from the Majolica collection were launched on Monday. Yeah. Um, we also launched a complete collection of Puffin Bay on Monday. Now I've created Bumbleberries bundles to go with both and those are what Lewis and Irene recommend you put with those collections. And you may see some of these fabrics cross over into more than one collection. Yeah. You know, something like a light grey or a light blue it might feature in more than one. Absolutely. But we do have fat quarter bundles of Bumbleberries available today, Karen. So I'm gonna being sneeze. as you've mentioned that, oh yeah, go and sneeze, Shane. <laughs> No, it's gone, sorry. It's gone. Oh, yes. no, that's all right. I don't need a squeaky noise in my ear, that's fine. <laughs> um, but if you do love bumbleberries, have a little look. There are some lovely bundles up, and I, I, they don't normally last long when I do that. Now, this is, I believe in angels, snow dots. What did we put with it, Jane? Crimson. Crimson. I Vincent love this Stewart fabric. This sends the camera bonkers, won't it? This is a gorgeous, this is a, a stash busting fabric. Now, that <clears> looks <throat> white. And the, and the dots it's don't not. look dots, they look like diamonds. But it's a lovely soft pale blue, icy blue, with this lovely red dot on it. This is the sort of fabric you just want to have in your stash because it would make great borders, yeah. binding. Oh, I, love a, I love a spotty or a stripy binding. Oh, Jane. yes. And crimson, just perfect. It's the absolute match red on this, so it's, it's lovely. I'm a big advocate of a pattern binding. Um, it's slightly sacrilegious, isn't it? But do you remember when I made that around the world quilt? Yes. And it had either slightly linen textured or plain blocks. Yes. Um, if anyone doesn't know, it's like a diamond work from the colour. Yes. It's just squares. It's yes. really simplistic. And I came in and I chose cave shirt stripes for the back. And then I used cactus flower in black for the binding. Yes. But it just gave that little pop. It had loads of different colours in. And then all the colours that were in the main panel of the quilt were there, complemented in that little border. And you couldn't see it was a flower, because no. it was for Meg and she's not a flowery person. But it just looked fantastic because you were getting that tiny little edge on the a border. little splash of, of colour. Yeah, yeah. On the binding. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now this is from the same mm -hmm. collection, isn't it? But this it's all um, we've got left. Again, this is a, a classic print. This is a lovely sort of shabby chic it's bunny hill designs yeah. she works with this lovely turquoisey blue palette with this bright vibrant red and i love it and this is um this is crimson again crimson yeah, again yeah yeah it's just the best but, you know you've got yeah you've got a lovely combination there for um a small quilt a or a quilt. nice bag you know mm. using that as your lining and your and your straps yeah 
you know, the the um, bag that, Je yeah. that Natasha did the other day, the trio one, yes. would look lovely in this. It would, or, you know, having this as your top panel and the, the spot as your base or the yes. red as your base, you know, there's loads of options there. Absolutely there? stunning. There's some gorgeous fabrics in this time. Well, there's always lovely fabrics, but there's some really uh, nice we ones try. there. We try, Jane, we do try. So that's your half metre heavens that, that go is. live at midnight tonight. They do. They are not available yet. They are available at midnight. Just bear in mind, two of the Lewis and Irene fabrics you've just seen are available cut to order, however, on the website. The ones with the cute little yeah. hedgehogs and the like. Um, but yeah, you've got a demo to do, Jane. Yes. I better let you crack on. Let's get on with it. It's not going to take long because what? it's such a simple block. And as I say, it's a versatile block. You're going to be able to scale this up, scale Brilliant. it down. You could make um, four patch blocks and shadow block them. You know, any square, or rectangle, any size, Marvel. it works with whatever you want you to make. This means you get to do some free motion demos, so what's not yeah. to love? Right, into overheads, demo time. So this is the block. This is how it works. I did mine as a rectangle, just because I felt it was something a little bit different. But you could use, you know, if you've got a charm pack and you're not sure how to use it, but you want to show it off to its best ability, the pattern works with that. Same with your layer cakes, any size square. Um, you can decide if you were doing a layer cake you might want to make your border a bit wider but it's basically you're working the principle is the same whatever you width your border is here works the same principle so I will show you it's a good opportunity to feature your star so your stash if you've got yeah. lovely fabrics in your stash and you keep wondering what to do with them you don't need a lot either Jane do you no if you've got a small piece yeah of nine fabrics you love just, um, you know, it's a good scrappy project as well, really. Yeah. Get some, grab some, a planes bundle and away you go. Yeah, get your planes and... Um, so, you're going to cut... All the measurements and everything are in, in the instructions. Um, but what I will say to you, when you start to put the blocks together and um, you come to put your sashing between, measure it all before you actually cut. I've, mm -hmm. I've put my measurements in there. But we all know that, you know, all our quarter of an inches are slightly different. So I always say, just measure it before you actually cut it, just to be on the safe side. Because it, there's nothing worse if you cut it quarter of an inch short and it doesn't quite fit. It's very annoying. Is it measure twice, cut once, they say? Yeah, something like that, mm -hmm. isn't it? Measure many times. So be you're going to sure. cut your strips. Um, the size of your block, just an, an, an inch. But don't forget your seam allowance smaller. So um, this is six and a half this way. So this is five and a half. And then we've got one and a half inch square. And the one and a half inch square goes across the bottom one as well. That's um, an inch longer than the, the width of my square, my rectangle there. Because, of course, you've got to think about the seam allowance. So we're just going to sew um, the square of your background fabric. So whichever colour you're going to have as your background is the one that's the little inch square. If you were if you were making your sashing wider, you make your square the same width as your sashing. So if it was a two and a half inch, like if you use a jelly roll, two and a half inches, you'd make your little square two and a half inch square. And of course you can chain piece these. Once you've cut all your strips that you need, you can just chain piece all of your little squares onto the end and that gets done in no time. Um, it's a really quick, fun project to make actually. So you're going to press those, um, you can either press them up and away under the grey or you can press them back so they go under the, under the black. But you've got your short strip and you've got your long strip. Now your long strip now should be the same length as your, the side of your rectangle or your square and you're going to sew that onto the side. Onto the right hand side, just make sure that you keep, you can sew it onto either side, but it looks more like a shadow if it's on the right hand side. So that the people will say, well, it depends on the time as to where the shadow is, but um, that's uh, how it works. I think quarter inch seems a bit wider on here. So you press that, and I would recommend that you press the seam so it goes underneath your square or your rectangle. Do you want me to pop an iron on it, Jane? Yeah, let's do that. It's not very... 
gone a little bit too high at the top and then I've lost some at the bottom. We'll trim that down. I think the, the um, quarter inch on this machine is slightly wider than the one in the workroom. That's an important thing to note, you know, if you yeah. do a project on more than one machine, you can expect sometimes to have little differences in your seam allowances. That's why it's recommended you it try and do your whole project It is always keep machine. it, you know, on the same machine each time really yeah. is, the, is the best yeah. recommendation. And then you place your next strip, your shorter strip, along the bottom. And again, I would press that in towards my square. So if we just press that yeah, that way, got it. just because you've got that seam in your sashing strip there, so it would it lies flatter if you press it towards the square. So that is literally your block. It's very simple to do, very easy. Um, you cut your sashing strips to the same length as your block, and you're going to sew. You're going to have three blocks, and so you're going to sew them in between. In between the blocks like so 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 onto the side the right hand side of these two and again you can chain piece once you you can lay all of your blocks out once you've made them you can lay them out into your nine and you can change them around at this point and decide how you want them to to sit I've gone with the a classic rainbow style with the planes. Um, you can try and do that with your cave fabrics. It's not as easy with caves to go as a rainbow, but you can go shading um, or just, you know, a nice variety, however you like. It's your quilt. You can do whatever you wish with it. Wendy says she's loving your pattern and has been adding to her stash to make this with big KFC prints. Lovely. And um, it is a really good opportunity to showcase your prints. It is. It, it's a, a great way. So I've pressed the seam this time towards the sashing strip again because there's, there's going to be less resistance there against that seam there. And then we can join those onto there. I'm going to join this square onto that side of that sashing there. And um, let's call the scene. And again, I'll press that in so it goes in towards the sashing. So they sit in the sashing that way. And then I'll attach this one to there. You can, of course, pin if you want to be more accurate. You will have more, more time to make it, but it is a, a nice quick make. And I thought, you know, you could use baby prints, children's prints in the squares, and it would make a lovely play mat. So cute. Um, you know, there's lots of different variations you can do. So if we just press that. You could make some applique blocks. Yeah. For your main. You could do blocks. anything you wanted, really, within that. It will um Right, are we positioned correctly? Yes. <laughs> we can do that one on there. Okay. Thank you. It's all right. Fingers out of the way, Jane. Yep. Imagine I can't burn the stitchy witch's fingers. <laughs> I've been burnt a lot of times. Yeah, they used to be in burnt. Not by me. <laughs> no, no. I'm not having that. <laughs> there we go. And just that final one there. That's lovely. So you'll make three rows like this. So your three squares with your two pieces of sashing in, you'll have your three rows. Um, so you've got your three rows of three blocks and then you'll join those together with your strip of sashing that sits Quick between. Block now you can see on here I've used the different greys. So um, I think so there's a slightly different shading, but again, I've gone with 
the same colour grey as I've used in my little squares mm -hmm. for the, the sashing in between yes. and then I've used a different shade um, for the one in between and it gives it a co consistency because you'll get the four, um, you'll need four that are the same width as your rows, they go between and then one on the top and one on the bottom like so. So you join your rows together with your sashing here and here and then you'll sew a row to the top and to the bottom on there and then you place the side ones and I got this all out of the same the same piece so that will go from run from top to bottom again what I will suggest to you is once you've got these pieces sewn on that you then measure it for your side pieces mm -hmm. um, because they could come out if you use a, you know I wouldn't cut those until you've I've given you the cutting instructions but maybe just check it before you cut just so that you don't cut it slightly smaller. Sure, Jane, that makes sense. And then we've gone with another border all the way around, a thin border and then the third border. But you could carry on, you could go, you could make yeah. more squares. Which you can see in the instruction yeah. sheet that you've got you there. can, And then layered it up and quilted it. It looks really impactful and really three-dimensional, Jane. Yeah, it does. It's got a lovely feel to it. It's such a versatile pattern and so easy to convert into different fabrics and different ideas you yeah. know it's very simple to do and i love it with these prints as well yeah they look they stunning look really don't they impactful. they're really, really and it's a, a great way to showcase your fabrics because you've got a really nice um chunk of fabric each time and as i say you could make your squares bigger you can make them square you can make them rectangular you can make them um, bigger in size so you know it really Beautiful. is a versatile pattern to use very simple to make and a quick make as well, I think. Well, nice we can quick see make. that. That yeah. is whipping together super yeah, that's, quick. Yeah, that's not going to take long to do at it's all. It's not just the block that comes together quickly. That quilt top, yeah. done. Yeah, it doesn't take long at all Who to do that. It's far. really it's really quick to do. This is a making a day job, isn't it? Yeah, you could fabulous. definitely make a quilt this size in a weekend, no yeah. problem. And yeah. still have time to eat. And, yeah, you, know. so you could get your top together <laughs> in a day. Yeah, like that's, absolutely. That's definitely achievable. Fantastic. Anne says that she's loving the shadow quilt. Yeah, and it's a lovely. It is a lovely versatile yeah. block. I really, I really did enjoy doing it. It was, um, and it's a lovely baby size quilt, or you've got a great wall hanging. Yeah, but you like know, we said you can make as many blocks as you want, or you yeah. can scale it up. Yeah, make, make it, it bigger, bigger. Um, add more blocks in. You know, yeah. if you've been having the subscription, you could have really good fun in doing all the shading yeah. in the rows, and you could have a really big quilt then. Because it doesn't take much of, yeah. of your fat quarter of that size. You know, your long quarter or your fat quarter is only going to take a little corner of it. I, I was think a colour chart like this now, Jane. You just got to whip up a yeah. colour chart. I was thinking know. about this. I was thinking, <laughs> you know, fabrics. you could do it and then you could just sort of quilt the colour name underneath. Yeah, yeah. That would be really yeah. good fun, wouldn't it? That would be fun. It's brilliant. It's really lovely. So, talking about yeah. quilting, I just wanted yeah. to go through the different types of um, wadding that we've got. Because they've all got a different sort of feel and texture to them and give you a different um, feel to your quilt really. We've got some Thermalan. Now Thermalan is really lovely. It's quite a dense, it's almost like felt. Yes. But if you've got um, like a wall hanging or something like that that you don't necessarily need it to have warmth to, mm -hmm. it's a really good um, wadding to have and it's good for cushions as well, cushion fronts, because yeah. it's not very um, doesn't have much loft to it no. so it's quite flat but it's got a lovely a lovely texture to it it That's, will be um, really good for a cushion front it, it's a compressed polyester yeah it does have good heat heat insulation and it is recommended for things like um oven gloves and table mats but they're very clear that you'd need to use at least two layers yes for those sorts of to items to give the protection exactly so it is designed for that but Layering up as well, yes. the space that you get between the layers where the air is trapped and warms up, that would contribute yes, to it the would. warmth yeah. gain. So, yeah. yeah, just to be really clear, because you'll think, hang on a minute, she said, what if, if you don't need it too warm? Yes. And it's called thermo lamp. It is... It's it, dense. It's, it's, it's dense. got a density to it. Yeah. Um, it's great. But as as they say in, the, in the, their recommendation is that you put two layers of it. Yeah. And if you've got some of the... Um, the one with the silver in. I've locked the name's oh, gone out of yes, it. My yes. head. When we don't have it at the moment either. No. It's um, if it, the insulated wadding. Yeah. You could put that in between and have yes. a layer of this on the top and the bottom and that would give you really good 
um, for placemats and, and oven gloves and things it would help What's with nice that. about the Thermalam is it isn't like the insulated wadding, it doesn't have that crackle. No, it's soft. I like a crackle, yes. but you don't necessarily want a crackly quilt. No, not necessarily, but Layering no. up yeah. is, is the thing with the Thermolam. Um, it is washable at 30 degrees and the quilt spacing on it should be at least 15 to 20 centimetres is yeah. the advice. Yep. We have all of that on our website, don't we? we? All do. that advice, it's so it's all there. there. This is polyester, this is our R80. Polyester is great, it doesn't shrink, so it's great for um, projects that you're probably going to wash a lot, so like children's projects yes. that you probably would, quilts and things, yeah. that you would probably wash more often than you would your, you know, your own quilt that you have yeah, just yeah. on your bed top. So polyester is great. You can wash it's it got, 60, Jane. It's got a lightness to it. Yeah. Um, and it's soft. It's... Um, it's sometimes it's a little bit stif stiffer. Ours actually isn't. Ours is a nice soft polyester, but sometimes you find with polyesters they're a bit um, stiffness is the wrong word, but they've got like a density to them. They hang yeah. flatter. Okay. Um, so if you're doing wall hangings and things like that, um, polyester is a good one to have as well. And this is recycled poly polyester as well. It's yeah. important to say um, because Vlieselina, I mean, they're very, very, you know, yeah. mindful of the environment anyway. There's some polyesters they've got like a scrim on the top and the bottom okay. and when you when you move them like this you can feel the top and the bottom move away well they actually the r h doesn't do that it's no. quite a nice it's a nice solid um wadding so you're going to get a nice result with that when i first started quilting jane a guy went and bless him bought me some wadding he'd just gone in somewhere and said i need some wadding my wife's making quilts and they sold us a, a really lofty Yes, this um, would be polyester and it, upholstery wadding. Yeah, yeah, loads of movement to it. Yes, and I took it to my local quilting shop where I was learning, and she said, "You're going to really struggle with this. It's going to make it hard for you yes. when you're learning, which isn't fair on you." No, uh, so I still got it. Yeah, <laughs> to find a job great for, for it covering at some seats. Point. I'm covering seats with. That for so polyester is like really versatile because it's great for bags, children's quilts, all sort of jackets. You know, if you're going to make right. clothing with it. Yeah, perfect. Because um, quilted jackets are all the thing at the moment. Then we've got um, my personal favourite, the Soft Cotton 8020. It's a eight... Lee Selina 279, if anyone needs to look that one up. This is um, an 80% cotton with a 20% polyester. So it gives you that um, security of the polyester in so much as that it doesn't shrink too much. It mm -hmm. does shrink a little bit. I think it's got less than 5% shrinkage to it. Um, it's got a warmth to it and a softness. And I love the drape with the 8020. It's light cotton, but it's um, it's, so, it's as soft as cotton, pure cotton. Um, but with the polyester, it just gives you that little bit of security with shrinkage and stuff. All our quilting um, wadding is fairly thin. You can see that. You don't actually need to have it too thick. I think people think that because it's a quilt and it's supposed to keep you warm, it needs to be quite thick, but it actually confused, doesn't. Yeah, to start with about this. And yeah. um, cotton is um, a nice warmth and it's got a nice drape to it as well. So for bigger quilts, it's lovely and soft. Yeah. When my quilting shop showed me wadding, and it's similar to this, uh, I was like, but it's so thin. And they said, but that's not what gives it the warmth. You don't no, need it. It's the thick. layering of it's the... It's not like a duvet. No. <laughs> No, and it's it so really, amazing really, because yeah, it, it's, it's really. amazing how, how warm they, they can keep yeah. you. This is our Bamboo 5050. Now this is a really good sustainable mm -hmm. product because bamboo grows really quickly and it's really easy to grow in most places. So um, it's 50% bamboo and it's 50% polyester, is it? 50% polyester? Oh, I, I want to say, it. I want to say, say the bamboo is, 50, is bamboo and cotton. cotton. I think it is cotton. Do you know? Again, it's it's yeah, it's, it's bamboo cotton mix. Yeah, Lisa fifty Lina percent of each. Eight. This is Lisa Lina two six eight. It's got a beautiful silky softness to it. It really is a beautiful wadding. And again, like the eighty twenty, um, it's got a lovely drape. It's nice and soft. It will have a bit of shrinkage because of the cotton, but again, not as much as pure cotton. Um, we don't actually stock pure cotton, do we? Is the heirloom oh, pure I'd cotton? Say the heirloom is, but um, the the thing with the Bamboo as well, and this is what Natasha is so fond of about it, is that bamboo is such an easily renewable fibre. It grows really quickly. Um, it is actually naturally antibacterial as well, bamboo. So, and, but it's, it is soft. Yeah. It's nice and soft too. But it, bamboo is so fast growing. Yes. That from, um, yeah, from an environmental perspective, 
It's yeah. a really excellent it choice. An excellent one. So that's the Lee Selina 268, the bamboo. Um, and we've got a little bit of the heirloom left. Now, the do. heirloom is a luxury product as far as I'm concerned. It's one that is 100% cotton. The softness of this, you can just, I don't know, you can probably even pick it up on the camera. There is a softness to this that is really beautiful. The drape to it is lovely. Um, it's got a really soft, you know, it's got a really nice drape. Yeah. It's because it's 100% cotton, it's going to have that shrinkage to it. So yes. you need to treat it like a wool blanket, really, when you're washing it. Very cool, gentle wash. Um, and it quilts up beautifully. Now, it, you know, it is a gentle hand wash yeah. item, this one. It really is. So this is for your heirloom quilts. Not necessarily the ones that are getting dragged in and out of the car and yeah. thrown in the mud That's <laughs> right. by your small people. This um, is an, an heirloom item. It's so soft. It is so soft so and it's soft. really warm. Got a really warm feel to it. Now, um, oh, what's, going on? what's I going to say about their hand quilting? If you're going to hand quilt, I would recommend that you use polyester wadding. Okay. Because all of these natural products have got like a bit of a slub in them. Okay. So occasionally you'll come across um, a density within them that's, you know, because it's a natural fiber and, and I can't really, it's very, <laughs> very find can't one. find any, but um, <laughs> you will find it. So it's actually easier to hand quilt through polyester because it's, oh. it's um, a consistent and it's got a little bit more loft the polyester has so when you're hand quilting it gives you a little bit more definition within oh, your quilting okay, nice. but obviously you know you quilt with you put whatever you want in, yeah. in your quilts and if you want to hand quilt with your um, cottons or your bamboos then yeah. you can do that you can also get 100 percent wool wadding we don't actually stock that but that is a really lovely product and again it's got a, it's got a weight to it wool has yeah. and it gives you a really lovely finish to your quilt nice drape to it and the warmth it's one yeah. of the warmest yeah. ones so it's really nice oh, so those are the warnings that the we've got front. it's always nice Amazing. to have they are lovely and, and i think it's nice to have these. have wadding in your sewing room so you've always got it so you've got yeah. it there and it's always at hand because there's nothing worse than making a quilt topper than finding you haven't got a piece of wadding that goes with it. There's always those core products that trip me up or used to trip me up and now I'm here I'm like right I must have certain items in at all times. There are things like having your wadding, your yeah. H640, your Styleville fix, your medium weight interfacing Jane. How many times? Oh yeah interfacing is one of those How things that you really yeah. need to have isn't it? How many times did I go to do a project? I'd think, yep, yeah, great, I've got a free afternoon. I'd pull things out and I'd go, oh, Gemma, you need a 20 inch square of wadding or you need some medium weight interfacing. Yeah. Or you need X, Y, or Z that I just, they should just be a staple. Yes. So I have them now because sometimes you do just have that moment where you think, oh, I've got a free afternoon. And if you haven't got your style Vilfix or you haven't got your H640, or you haven't got your wadding, it's really annoying, Jane. It is. I like, really wanted to make this and I, I wanted can't. to make this today and I can't yeah. make it now because I haven't got all the things I need. So, and I, I, it, sounds, it sounds to me, Gemma, that you're a bit like me, that you need to have everything at hand yeah. before you can start something because otherwise yeah. you feel like you're not going to get it finished. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It, it does frustrate the life out of me if I haven't got what I need. So we're helping you to stash build. We're helping you to plan your projects. Yeah. Um, that wadding deal that we have on, 15% off, is only for today. And that discount is applied already. So it doesn't affect your ability to use another discount. If you're buying your K-Facet fabrics, for example, today, K-Facet Collective, and you use the code for the three for two, fret you not. I've already factored in the discount on the wadding. So that is already built into the price. You don't need a code for it. It's already on. Okay. I wanted to share this book with everybody because I love this book. It's incredible. It's Quilting Designs, Unlimited Quilting Designs. Um, Christina Camellia? Camellia? I'm going to say Camelli. Camelli. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's not a, um, it's not a how-to book. It's more about the options and how you can combine um, different patterns but what I did like about it, it's a little bit like an exercise book. There's all patterns in the back here mm -hmm. and combinations. And these are the sort of things that you could put over 
over the top and, and trace over to yeah. get the feel of the design. But she also gives you the pattern as you would uh, do and it. And the direction. And the well, direction and the, and the um, a little bit about of how to, you know, how to echo and things. So she starts off with the very basics of um, a simple pattern. So like here for leaves, so like a leaf shape. So from here, she started with a circle, she's gone round, she's come back, she's gone round, so she's echoed that circle, then she's gone up, formed the leaf shape, echoed it again, come up and done the same. But she's also shown you the different um, types of leaf, the different fillings that you can put in, all the different things. So it's a really good reference when you're stuck for ideas about how to do something. So there's flowers in there, um, pebbles, circles of different styles of things, um, spirals and things, branches and leaves, you know, you can go really intimate. So starting from a very simple um, fronds type pattern or a, a simple feather, you can then elaborate within, within the, the, the shapes and make it different. Um, all sorts of different designs in there and it's a good reference you can have it next to your machine while you're sewing and you can have a look and see so there's spirals in there you know how to go round and come back she's saying here it's maybe when you do your spiral it's probably not the best idea to go on the outside of it give yourself space and go on the inside mm -hmm. and that gives you a bit more room um, to make your design going from Clever. sort of like um, a sharp meander to then making it softer and then she works goes through and says you know put combinations together put two two styles together and you can come up with and there's, there's a bit here about finishing off little spaces that you might have or if you get into a tight tight area what you can do it's a really interesting book to read she explains things really clearly and then she's got combinations here so things that you can put together different patterns that you can put together and have a play with so like she's got the meander there but then she stuck a star in it um, that looks great stars there so having this next to you and I've always said this like whenever I'm doing a free motion design I do spend a bit of time with a blank piece of paper just doodling mm -hmm. getting the idea and it sort of gives you um like a muscle memory yeah so nice. that you've got the idea where you're going to go each time yeah. with your with your spiral and things. There's all sorts of different combinations there. She starts off by using two patterns and then she'll go on to say, well, you can put three combinations together and get some really nice effects. What I really like, Jane, is if you had pieced your top, hadn't yet sandwiched it, you could lay your top over here and either have the book with a light box behind it yeah. or whatever and be able to see what your pattern would look like with your block yeah you know and just move and there's and nothing to stop pages. you using your um erasable fabric marker mm. whether it's your chalk marker or your iron off one be careful with your iron off one because they can leave ghost marks um to trace it onto your fabric you know yeah. if you're still a little bit worried about your free motion quilting be me. There's nothing to stop you drawing it onto your fabric first. Yeah. You don't have to follow the line because once you've got rid of the mark, nobody else but you will know that it wasn't on the line. Super. So there's some really nice things there. It's a I find it a really useful book because sometimes you're not really sure what to, you know, I do a meander and I'll do a squiggle sometimes um, or a bit of a curve, but then it's just a good sort of reference point thinking oh I could just try doing that and I could maybe have a go at that. The thing is you tend to get into a rut or a comfort zone don't you? Yes. And then you, you lack inspiration sometimes as yeah. well it's just that whole it's having it's having an some inspiration vision. some mm -hmm. vision some ideas and what I also like about this it's very obviously hand-drawn. Yes. So yes. the curves are not exactly but you know the spirals are a little bit wonky in places and I think that is nice to see and when you look at the the quilting sample as well if you really study that you can see that some of the spirals are not you know complete yeah. circles and things like that there might be some inconsistency in yeah. the spacing and that's absolutely fine too because that's part of what makes it a hand quilted item and not a you know automated yeah. done by robots type thing 
So I'm just going to, I'll do a little demonstration just to sort of elaborate how we do the free motion quilting. We've got two feet here um, for Natasha's machine. One is a complete circle and one is like a horseshoe shape. Mm -hmm. um, either of them will work. It doesn't matter. Your, um, your machine may come with a, I think they're called darning feet sometimes, or they're called um, embroidery feet. They might be a full circle. They're, they're, they might be clear plastic. Um, they're all slightly different, but they all do the same job. I personally like the horseshoe shape because you've got a little bit more um, area to see where you're going. But my, my machine at home is a circle. Nice. But I did used to have a, a horseshoe one and I liked that better, but I changed my machine and the foot was a different one. Oh, I see. So you just need to change, change your foot on your machine to your free motion, darning, embroidery foot, whatever it's called within your machine. They're usually quite <laughs> straightforward to change. While you're doing that, Jane, Claire Angelina says, making quilt tops in a long weekend. Yep. Sandwiching, quilting and binding, several working years. <laughs> yes. We've all got bags We've full of quilt tops. We've all yeah. got them. We have. Vicky's asking, are the different waddings different warmths, Jane? Um, they tend not to be. They tend not to be. Um, there is, a, there is a, a little bit more warmth to like the pure, like the natural fibres, like the cotton and the wool. They have got a more of a warmth to a them denser, they? and they're a little yeah. bit denser. So they do feel a bit warmer. And I think polyester by nature feels cold. I don't know what it is. There's just... I don't know if it's because it's a man-made fibre, but it does feel cooler. That's why it's quite useful. And for it's children. light, you see. Yeah. That it's a light. It's got a lighter feel to it. There's a heaviness to cotton, and particularly wool. Wool wadding is yeah. quite heavy. Um, but wool, you see, is one of those fibres that is cool in the summer yeah. and warm in the winter. It's it's because it's a natural fibre. Magical. Yes, yeah, magic. Magical. <laughs> so layering up your quilt. Generally speaking, we say make your backing and your wadding wider than your finished top. This is the same size just because I cut it quickly. Um, but you would have your backing and your wadding wider just because when you're quilting, it can pull your top, pull it, pull it in. So you might want to just have that extra bit of wadding and what have you. Um, you can tack your three layers together. You can pin them. I like the curved safety pins. You can spray baste. If you're doing a small project like... Um, a cushion top or a run, table runner, spray basting is great. I wouldn't recommend spray basting for a large quilt just because by the time you've got about a quarter of it done, it'll mm -hmm. start to come unstuck, which is quite frustrating. And I don't see the point of spray basting and then pinning. No. It just seems like a waste of spray baste to me. But that's just me because I know people do like to baste and then pin. So. I'm it's now all smiling personal. to myself because you know I love a spray base, <laughs> although I haven't made enormous quilts. No. They've all been manageable size. Yes. I can't be trusted with pins. No. You stick them in yourself, don't you? Yeah, I'm known for it. Yes. <laughs> so once you've got everything layered up, nicely pinned, um, if you're pinning, palms width apart, tacking same again start from the middle of your project work out towards the edge this is just so that you can make sure that the, the all three layers are nice and smooth um, I go from north to south east to west so I've got that cross point through and then I'll work from the middle out into each quarter as I pin or tack I don't tack very often now because it takes such a long time and you don't have time I don't have time we expect you to produce something fabulous every week <laughs> crack on Jane crack yeah. on <laughs> So um, once you start with your um, free motion foot, you need to bring your bobbin thread up to the top of your work. So lower your foot. Sometimes with your um, embroidery darning foot, you'll, you'll feel like it's not holding the fabric. That's fine. You don't need it to because you, you are moving the fabric. You can drop your feed dogs if you wish to. Um, some people find it easier. So you drop your needle in and lift it out and it should bring your bobbin thread to the top of your work. So you've got the two, the bobbin threads come up and you've got your top thread there. You want to lower your needle in again, just lift your foot and then take the threads underneath and behind. That's another reason why I like the open toe on the, 
on there because you don't have to if you've got the closed toe you have to get um, a pin or your unpicker underneath to grab the threads to pull them under it's just a little bit um, more uh, not difficult but you know it takes a little bit of time to do that whereas it's easy to lift it up with the open toe and just pull it behind so when you're free motion quilting you are the per you decide your stitch length so if i didn't if i don't move my fabric this is just going to stitch on the spot like that um so you need to be able to move your i'm just going to turn this around so i've got a bit more you need to be able to move your fabric i always keep my hands apart like that so I'm working on that area there between my two hands don't worry about what's going on down here just work within that area there you need to find um, a consistent speed which is nice which is one of the other things which is nice if you've got um, a machine with a speed control on because then it doesn't matter how hard you put your foot down it's always going to go at a consistent speed you need to go a little bit faster than you feel comfortable with which is, sounds really strange but um, it just needs to have a, a quite a, a good speed going on. Now, if you move quite slowly, you're going to get short stitches. And if you move fast, you're going to get long stitches. So it really is finding, one, the speed that you feel comfortable with, and two, the movement of your fabric so that you get a nice consist consistent stitch length. And really, doing a meander is just moving the fabric around. You're moving the fabric and you're moving it around and you're filling the space. Now, you can go in ripples and then you can come back and you can go backwards and forwards and just follow the lines and fill up the spaces. And then as the... I can't remember the lady's name. Christina. Christina says you can then start, you know, moving things around. So once you've got your ripple effect, you can start going into spirals. So you come round in a curve, you get to where you want the middle to be, and then you just come back again. And she recommends that you go in the middle inside rather than the outside. You can come around your curve, echoing it, and then you can come back and go the other way and start filling in your shapes again that one's gone a little bit curvy it doesn't matter and you can start filling in using that shape and filling in those spaces you can start having fun with your curves you can do a spiral and then when you get to the outside you can start doing petal shapes you can make those as big as you like you can come back and echo echo those You can bring your spiral round. You can go round again if you need to get to a, to a space that you need to be in. You can bring that round and just do a spiral in there and then come round here and do another spiral. You might not feel confid confident doing soft petal shapes but you might feel more confident doing star shapes. So you're quite happy to do like a straight line. Again, it doesn't matter if they're not consistent shapes. I think it adds to the texture of your quilting if they're a little bit wonky. You can come round those again in a curve. come round all the way round and follow that round if you feel 
once you've got a curve shape going on, you might feel that you, you're quite comfortable doing a leaf shape. You can do a leaf shape like that. You could fill the leaf shape up, making it actually look like a leaf by going up, coming down, making your um, stalk shapes. If you're a doodler, you'll probably find free motion quilting quite easy to do. We've already had a comment saying if you loved etch, etch a sketch as a kid. Yeah, absolutely. You know. You've got your leaf there. Again, you can come round there and you can echo quilt that. You could come round to the front of that and you get to this point here and you might think, well, actually, I quite fancy having a spiral up there. It really is, um, you know, you're limited really by your imagination as to what sort of patterns you do. You might get to this point here and you might think, well, actually, I'm going to do circles within that shape there. It's called pebbling and your circles fill in your shapes. You could bring it into another spiral there and come back round. When you do your meander, like the star one, you just get to a point there and you come down and go across and across again. And it just makes your star shape. You come back to your line and you carry on meandering and you just work your way around. You come down here and you might think, well, I'll do another, I'll do another star shape there. If one of your points is a little bit soft and has got a curve to it, again, it doesn't really matter. Um, one of the, the patterns that she did, um, she did hearts. So you come down and you do your heart shape. And again, you can echo that. This is one of those things where you do just need to get some scrap fabric and have a play. Yeah, you'll get you know. to feel, and I, I do recommend that you practice, 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 practice. My teachers um, used to say to me, you're better off practicing five minutes a day than you are half an hour once a week. Yeah, it's true. It's just yeah. getting the feel of how things go within. Just take your machine for a walk, isn't it? Yeah. You can have so much fun with it, and it really is just taking it your line for a walk across your fabrics. But you know, it, it you is know, potentially uncomfortable to try and come up with this on your own, and so the book is there to help it's and support just, you. I think the thing is, sometimes you don't know um, what to do. Yeah. You don't know the, the style of pattern to no. do. You can see here, this is a leaf. And she's come up, she's done a loop there, and then she's come and she's made the leaf pattern there, and then come back. Done a loop there, make the leaf pattern, and come back. See, I wouldn't have thought of going into the leaf pattern, that second leaf, that yeah. way, but it, it works. It's another way of getting you out of the space. So like, yeah. if you come here and you make your leaf and you're like there and you're like, well, I don't want to go up, I can't go up there, I've got no space, but I need to come down. So by going and echoing it, it brings you back to where you started. So you're there in the space for your next piece. Yeah. And it's just, it really is just letting yourself be free. Mm -hmm. Having a scribble cloth like this, just a plain piece of calico with a bit of off cut of wadding, um, by your machine. And every time you go to start a project, just spend five minutes having a little play with your free motion before you start your project. Sure. I do it have just, a scrap anyway, even just to check that my yeah, machine's running. Well, I think we all do. I think most yeah. people that, that do, they'll just a nice big panel re like yeah, yeah. rethread your machine and have a play. Yeah. It really, and, and actually, once you've got over the fear, yes. it's quite um, mindful. You can yeah. just, you know, find things. And it's like, it is like doodling on cloth, cloth with thread. Marvellous. I see this, Jane. I see this. Wendy Ash has had the book. She says... Uh, She's got her first two books, fantastic design, resources, little projects, beautifully layout and good instructions. Yeah. Oops, this one's just jumped in my basket. Um, 
there are always authors that you find that you go, yeah, they do this particularly well. Yeah. And when this book arrived, you did a little happy dance and a shriek and you said, I need one ordering for me. <laughs> yes, so you I've can got... borrow this one. You went, I don't care, I want my own. You need my so own you copy. You bought one. Yes. Yeah, you really she bought yeah, one. Yeah, I did. I and got my own copy. And she bought her own copy and had to get it straight away. Couldn't just have this one temporarily. No, no it's got to be away. mine. Um, and we did because you wanted to be able to work yeah. with it and play with it. And yeah. It's yours. I found it a really useful resource because... I consider myself, when it comes to free motion quilting, I'm still learning. I think you learn all the time anyway, no matter how long you've been doing it. But I've been, up until recently, I've been quite, um, oh, just quilt in the ditch or echo quilting with my walking foot, maybe a soft curve occasionally. And I really wanted to, this year, I've really wanted to sort of push myself with my free motion quilting. And I've had the opportunity occasionally to, to have a project where I've been able to do a bit of free motion quilting and it's really helped me. Um, come into my own and practice a bit more but I do think I'm still very safe with my meander or a little bit of a spiral so it, this book is sort of it's inspirational because yeah. it's like well you can do pretty much any sort of design you like and it gives a lovely effect and I think what's nice about this book is as well you see the line drawing there but you actually see what it looks like exactly. when it's quilted yeah because it so it gives you the texture yeah. yeah I really like as well how it will combine a curve with a sharp point yes which in my brain that doesn't no. go together and then you see some of her designs and you get actually that's brilliant but I wouldn't know how to go from one stage to the next that's the big thing for me is doing something go oh, I really like that and then go but what next yeah and not knowing the transition into another shape yeah she takes all of that out for you that's right and you can see it here you can yeah. see the lines you can see how the patterns are constructed and how they go together where she's got she's gone round that flower there that soft shape there she comes up to this corner here and then she starts by doing like a leaf pattern with a sharp point on it and it just gives a, another effect to the to the to the um design she's got a little feather fern shape going on here sure and she gives you the ideas of how it's constructed the, here the direction stuff yeah is so helpful um, this is Free Motion Combinations. She has done several books, like we say, Christina Camelli, but this particular one is Free Motion Combinations. It's at the top of today's collection. We do have access to two other books of Christina's, which I've made sure are loaded into the collection now. They weren't there earlier, I've put them in. There's First Steps to Free Motion Quilting and there's Step-by-Step -step Texture Quilting. We don't have those here to show you. They're probably in Natasha's house, um, <laughs> but they are available on the website today and we will pass that over to the publisher and get them to fulfill those for you. I think it's lovely because she's broken it down, yeah. made it step by step, made it easy to visualise and I think that's half the problem is you visualising how you're going to do something. That is my biggest challenge in sewing ever Yeah. and that's why I love working with Natasha is that she'll create a pattern and I go well, I wanted to make that, but I, you know, I, I didn't know I wanted to make it. Yes. I knew I wanted something, but I didn't know what it was. And she makes it and I go, oh, that's what I wanted. Yeah. The vision is the biggest challenge. Yeah, I think or it is. Or yeah. having a vision for once and being really excited about it and then stumbling on the way to know, like, just one little step to get there. Yes, yeah. And that's where our instructions are really detailed and, and you know, this one's a simple one today, you were yes. saying, but... You've still put really detailed instructions together, full colour. I think it's important because I think if if that pattern is the is inspire someone to have a go for the first time, and then they get the pattern and they go, oh, you just do this and you do that, and it's the first time you've ever made a quilt, mm. it can be off-putting because you're like, well, I don't actually yeah. know how to do that. There can be a lot of assumed knowledge, yeah. can't there? We so try we try and that, make yeah. it very step by step so that anybody, if it's their first pattern, they'd still understand it. Exactly. And as well as having those patterns available, you've got the tutorials to back it up. Yes. So you can always go onto YouTube or our website and find the tutorials and watch them back, yeah. which Lovely. is great. Yeah. And this will be there. Yes. That's where it'll be on YouTube uh, or on Facebook. On Facebook you can, but it's difficult to find. Yes. So we'll say website yeah. and YouTube. YouTube's website and YouTube ones. is the best. Yeah. YouTube is the best, isn't it, really? We love YouTube. They are very easy to find. Um, we do have a few little comments, so I will just quickly read those for you, as well as Wendy saying how lovely all of Christina's books are. Yes. I've loaded the other two, so there you go. Vicky's very organised. Us saying about having quilt tops and they just stack up. Yes. As and I know she does this. I've seen it. Yes. Vicky's new to sewing. For those of you who don't know, it's only this year we've got her into it. 
She says as she plans projects, she's been bundling them together and having a list on the front of the... So she has like the pouches like John does. Yes. But she puts everything in and then she puts a list on the front that says which fabrics, materials, extras, waddings, backing, etc. and quantity. So at a glance, she can see what she needs. Amazing. To That's complete very that organised. Then she orders it, gets me to bring it back, and then she puts it all together and it makes an item. Lovely. She's that got way more finished things than I have. I am the very queen of well the organized. UFO. I've got bags of things and I get the bag out and I look in it and I'm like, mm, what was I making there? Exactly. What was that? Exactly. I get it all out and I'm like, mm, well, I know why it's back in the bag because I've run out of that fabric. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> because I buy fabric because I like it and then I yeah, decide to make yeah. something and then find out I'm like half a metre short or something. It's such a pain, isn't it? Yeah, and then you can't remember where you got the fabric from. Exactly. <laughs> Google Images is your friend, but even then, by then yeah. it's gone. Yeah. It's Suddenly finished. it's like... I'm going to make yeah. a scaled down version. Uh, Karen says, you're constantly helping me to spend money. Gemma, thank you. <laughs> My mother said good morning. Hi, Mum. <laughs> Etch a sketch was mentioned. Yeah. Claire Angelina's put every safety pin she owns for her current quilt. Has she quilted it? Nope. No. If she wants any safety pins, she's got to. Or she's yeah. got to buy some. Joe asked a question, and I don't know what it was regarding. Joe, you said, how much extra would you say you need on a large quilt, please? I don't know whether she means wadding versus normal like quilt I al size. yeah I always That's say thing, when yeah. I'm making my quilt top the size of my quilt top four inches either side that sounds quite a lot and people will say well if you're doing it yourself you only really need two inches extra but I would go with four inches just because you've got it then so add eight inches to each side of your quilt it's okay. a measure yeah. Both ways, and then add eight inches yeah. for both measurements. For your backing and Top your tip. wadding. Backing and wadding should be about the same size. Your, your backing may be a fraction bigger than your wadding. Is that sufficient if you're sending it for long arming? Because they do need Yeah, because I think they? long armers ask for you to have it four inches. Four inches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, they've got to roll it on, haven't they? And yes, and it, it's they, it has to be spinning. pinned onto a bar, you see. So you're going to lose a little bit for that and then with the long arm machine you've got the throat of the machine and then there's, there's a, um, obviously the machine part as well so they need to have that extra bit for the machine. Okay. Useful. Vicky says would you do some larger initial lines all over to hold it all and avoid movement or would you work with the detail as you go? She means the free motion. Yeah so. I would work um, from one corner down mm -hmm. People used to say start from the middle and work out and you can do that because if you haven't pinned it properly and it starts to yeah. ripple then at least you can unpin it and smooth it out again. Um, but if I was just doing a meander I would start in one corner and work my way across the quilt. Um, if you've pinned it or tacked it well enough you shouldn't need to do any extra stitching on it. Yeah. You can tack with your machine, you can take your machine up to its biggest um, stitch length and you can run t stitches through that and that will hold the three layers together yeah. if you want that security. I suppose it depends on your project as well, doesn't yeah. it, Jane? If you've got something that is square or rectangular panels, yes. you could go through and stitch in the ditch or, or as near as yeah. all over the whole thing to keep it absolutely sturdy. I quite then often, you do your I quite often what I will do is I will stitch, if I've got like blocks like this one, yeah. I would stitch through my seams with my walking foot just to stabilize it which is what I've done here and then free motion so it's sort of like tacking it in a way but it's yeah. already done because once you've quilted a quilt once you've got the three layers together and the and the basic of it done even if you've bound it you can always go back and do more quilting yeah. on it yeah yeah so um, you know, I could I could come back into this and quilt more because that's stable now. That's not going to move. You could go in the borders, you could do yeah. whatever you like, couldn't you? Or yeah. go into the black, perhaps, and, and do something. You know, there's all sorts of options. Yeah. But doing that initial straight line stitching yeah. either right next to the seam or in the ditch is yeah. not a bad plan if no. you're a bit nervous about yes. wanting to keep everything stable before you start meandering yes. and taking it yeah. all on a walk. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, Diane just says amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, we like that. <laughs> and Claire says you make it look so easy, Jane. The step by step is good. Um, Vicky says I appreciate that detail, detail so much. I don't have any sewing common sense to draw on yet. It's not obvious to me as I'm still learning. Yeah, well, we're um, all learning all the time, I think. And that was what Jo meant yeah. when she said about the extra bit. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh no, which, which bit? You yes, know, what, did what that bit mean? was that? Yeah. What did that mean? What did that mean? 
Um, Hi ladies, was there a show on yesterday? I missed it and can't find it anywhere. Natasha was down in London interviewing Kay Fassett yesterday. It's his 85th birthday today. I'm going full circle now with what I said at the start yes. of the show. Uh, but it's really important to say there wasn't a show yesterday. There was, however, a crazy discount on our Cut to Order Kay Fassett Collective Fabrics where you buy two half metres, you get the third one free on all Cut to Order. Um, you'll see that's all in a collection together. It's still on today. It wasn't supposed to be, but I appreciate that some of you perhaps didn't see a newsletter or wasn't really sure what was going on. There was some disappointment that perhaps didn't get your KF offer in by midnight. So K Facet Collective, if you are a fan, if you go into today's collection on the Watch Live page or Workshop Wednesday, you will see the cut to order fabrics all listed there. There's nearly 150 of them in the offer that you can buy two half metres and get the third free. So if you buy a meter edge even, yeah. You're going to get a metre and a half the price of a metre, and so on. Mm -hmm. So make lovely. the most nice of deal. that offer. It will end at midnight tonight. We do also have the discounts on some of our waddings at 15% off. We have got that discount on the rotating cutting mat, and there's some other Friday deals. And there are some sample items too. They're on the sample page. Um, I've seen some of them have sold already, so I'm loath to start pulling things out of the bag and showing you things. But go and have a peek go and see. I'm going to see if I can do a video of Jane doing a little bit of mo free motion on my phone as well so that we can get that up on social so you can see it right, you know, need live view. Um, I think that's a good plan. Good okay. plan. Yeah, that's a good plan. And I might plan. wave some samples around as well. So just keep an eye on the website. Um, keeps going mad today this. Keeps trying to get me to watch Netflix. It's oh, obviously right. some program. Natasha's been watching it. Keeps zipping back to that. <laughs> not what we want today, is it? Yeah. Um, but it's been lovely to have you all with us. We will be back next week. Yes. With block two of the calendar quilt. Yes, yes. A nice woven heart yes. for you next week. Yes. It's been really well supported. We can see you love it. And that's great to hear. So we're working on making sure we've got enough stock for next week. Um, because everyone fell in love with that lovely frosty flake. Yes, for January. it was lovely. It was lovely, yes. It was. Uh, Natasha will be around as well Monday, Tuesday next week. Lovely. We've got her too. She might have a cheeky little uh, visitor Monday as well. Someone to come and make you all giggle pre Christmas. They're a Christmas fan also. That's lovely. all I'm saying. Yes. That's all I'm saying. But for now, this evening, get onto your half meter heavens at midnight. Tomorrow, daytime, if you're taking the risk. Friday, SJ will have a newsletter with you and Natasha will be back on your screen on Monday. Lovely. Take care. Good to see you. Lots of love. Bye-bye.